Jim has seen a few too many movies and YouTube videos. He's come across a bunch of cool chest exercises like the cable crossovers. He tries these exercises over and over only to find his chest severely lacking. Chad is a total gym bro, obsessed with maxing out his bench press. He wants nothing more than to bench more than his peers so he can grunt and howl each time he hits a PR. Then there's Achilles who understands that the primary function of the chest is to push and blast through any opposition that stands in his way on the battlefield. Instead of playing around with fancy machines, Achilles sticks to the fundamentals, mixing up bodyweight training and weights to keep him supremely aesthetic, functional and athletic. I remember when I started in the gym, because the first images we see of gym training is the bench press and the cliche phrase of like, how much do you bench, bro? I was obsessing about the flat bench press and just doing that. I remember watching also this movie, this Korean movie called Ninja Assassin, probably a terrible movie. But there was one scene where the main character is a Korean guy called Rain, and he does these cable crossovers. I don't know if it was in the movie or it was in the training video for the movie, but he does these cable crossovers and it looked so badass that I was doing that for ages in the gym as well. And guess what? My chest wasn't really developing in the way that I wanted to. And a lot of people have this. They have this fat or the muscle that collects in the bottom half of their chest or they look a little bit caved in and it just doesn't look aesthetic. What you want is a very open, full chest that is evenly spread from top to bottom. So in this video, we're gonna go into how to build that aesthetic chest that you see from Hollywood movies and things like that, all right? Let's get into it. First point is this, you wanna focus on the upper half of your chest. The reason for this, and it's the same for the upper back, is that when you meet someone and you shake their hand and you see their face, what you normally see, what comes in your field of vision is the top half of the upper body. So if you have a developed upper chest, shoulders, traps, neck, it's gonna make you look more masculine and more attractive. But let's just focus on in the chest. The upper chest is an area that is lacking in a lot of people. And because people just do flat bench press and all this kind of stuff, you have this fat that naturally collects in the bottom of your chest. And you get some kind of droopy chest with the nipples that face down to the ground. You've seen those, right? That's not a great look. You need to focus on the upper half of your chest, which is done with any form of incline bench press, whether it's with barbell, whether it's with dumbbell, or if you want to use body weight to do feet elevated versions of the push up, because that angle is what's going to hit the upper chest. Second point, stop doing all these cable flies and dumbbell flies. I think flies are probably one of the worst exercises that became so popular. I don't know if people still do them, to be honest. They definitely do cable flies a lot in Korea. You know, these cable crossovers, cable flies. And yes, it's good for pumping blood into your muscle, but it's actually not the most effective way to actually pack on a lot of muscle in an efficient way because you're dealing with such light weight. The reason for this is because the primary function of the chest is to push and you can push extremely heavy stuff but closing your arms which is another function of the chest like closing a window it's never going to be that strong so you're not going to be able to move a lot of weight and so the muscle doesn't need to adapt and get bigger so while it looks cool while it's good for pumping more blood in there and even more effective if you're on steroids if you're not doing none of that then it's not the most efficient way to build muscle and don't even get me started on dumbbell flies because it's the first injury i got when i was doing these heavy ass dumbbell flies and felt something weird in my shoulders and i had to skip gym for weeks it's just not the most efficient way you guys know i talk about minimalist training where you want to optimize and minimize the amount of training you do and still get maximum results and the way you do that is by focusing on the most important exercises and dumbbell flies and cable crossovers all these fancy cool Instagram exercises are not what's gonna get you there, okay? Next, don't neglect the body weight. There's a section of people who probably go to the gym all the time who think body weight is some kind of lackluster way of training, some kind of not a real way to hit your muscles or whatever. But these people have never really truly explored body weight training. If you do push ups and dips, but with you know weight attached to you, or you do one arm push ups or variations of one arm push ups, whatever it is, there's a way to hit your chest in such a heavy way with bodyweight training and because it's a closed chain movement meaning the ground is fixed your limbs are attached to a fixed ground muscle activation is heightened 
and it's you know less risk of injury it's gonna make you more functional it's gonna make you master your own body weight so these are all very good ways of developing your chest you can just see from the gymnasts in the olympics and stuff their chest looks amazing right more than the droopy chesty chad guys and the reason for that is because they train very effectively with their body weight don't neglect it and again if you elevate your feet when you do the push-ups you're gonna be hitting that upper chest instead of doing push-ups 50 push-ups 100 push-ups do 100 push-ups every day instead of doing that just stick to a solid rep range anywhere from 5 to 15 reps in the body weight section and try to get to a harder variation of an exercise rather than just doing more and more reps. That's the way to incorporate strength training into calisthenics. If you want an entire structured program on how to go from the simplest movements to the hardest movements and everything in between, then check out the link below because I have a bodyweight program that goes into all of that. Next one, let's focus on the shoulders. All right, this is a video about chest, but you want to also focus on building your shoulders because if you have a developed chest and tiny shoulders, the ratio is just gonna look weird. If you have developed and wide shoulders, it's gonna make your chest look bigger because the overall width is larger and it's just gonna give you that illusion of a very wide upper frame. And you just want developed proportionate shoulders to go with your developed chest as well. So how do you do that? You basically, instead of doing incline, you just raise the angle even more and make it into an overhead press, whether with dumbbells or barbells, or in the body weight, how do you do? Instead of elevating your feet, you just keep elevating it even more until you become vertical and you do handstand push-ups. That's how you hit your chest. Of course, handstand push-ups is a very difficult exercise, so you want to start with elevated push-ups, pike push-ups, focus on your back. Again, why? Because the back muscles is what opens up entire, your entire front side, gives you that postural fix so that you stand confident, you look relaxed and laid back, and your upper frame is just opened up. That's going to make your chest look better. Otherwise, you have this caved-in look, and even if you have really well-developed chest, you're just not doing it justice because you're kind of caving it and hiding it. It's not a good look. Too many people that do chest exercises or these boxes that always have to keep their face protected, they have this hunched-over look. It's not good. It's a fight-anxious look. Instead, train your back, and that's going to make your chest aesthetic. The final thing that I'll say guys is, as I say for all these muscle videos is, you wanna get lean enough. Because you see these guys with huge chest power, but they're just fat. They got just chunks of fat hanging off them. If you wanna maximize for powerlifting, maybe that's what you wanna do. But the thing that's gonna make your chest look aesthetic is if you have that separation, if you have the lines that separate the chest from the shoulders, if you have the line that goes through the middle, if you have all of that, that is gonna make your chest look even better. And that obviously comes from lower body fat and getting lean. Go on about this in a lot of my other videos. So if you really wanna know how to get to lower body fat, you know, check out my videos, the Hunger Game series and all this kind of stuff. And that's it. Last but not least, you know, if you like this video, please share it with someone or leave me a comment on what you want to see next, because I want to make videos that you actually want to see. And I do read the comments, so please leave down below what you want to see. Let's get to it. See you in the next video. All right, I'm going to show you what I have for dinner. Two chicken breasts, which I'm going to put inside of the Korean soup called Biyoko, which is a birthday soup, just to top it up with a bunch of protein. Chicken done. Protein in. Wash everything before it gets all sticky. Here we go. Five rounds. Whoa, Madonna. With a Korean. Dinner be complete without kimchi? The answer is never. Voila kimchi. And then we have kaktugi, which is basically kimchi but radish version rather than cabbage version. Plus chicken breasted miyoko. 
a dish that I invented, I would like to say, because I've never seen anyone have chicken inside Biokov, which is a beef-oriented soup dish. Now, chicken breast is usually very dry, so if you can put it in like a soup like this that adds moisture, then it's a kind of hack. You, you can have moist chicken breast. Of course, if it's like one day old, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's still gonna be dry as fuck, but. So in Korea, we usually have this soup for our birthday, and we have tteokguk, which is like rice cake soup, on the new year, when it's also everyone's birthday. And we also eat soups like this, ultra hot, like, just after boiling, like you saw me do here. So this is probably like 95 degrees, and if you're Korean, you're able to eat it ultra hot in fact i would say koreans mostly prefer it super super hot like we get burnt inside the mouth i mean that's not the goal but and look let me tell you the chicken breast works it works inside biyoku it's a way to make like a normal dish into a high protein dish without maxing out the calorie intake I just told you a super trick. If you just cook chicken breast like I did, with just seasoning, a little bit of oil, just cook it enough, don't overdo it. Then you put it in like a soup like this. Buonissimo. Miyoku kimchi combo. Another combo made in heaven, like tomato, basil, mozzarella. This is probably a good time to tell you, um, why I'm dressed like in this black thing is because I'm gonna be traveling down south to attend a friend's family member's funeral. And in Korea, it's customary for friends to join up with the person, spend a lot of time with them, laugh and drink and have, you know, have a good time, like show them a good time because they're obviously very sad. So I'll be doing that, I'll be staying overnight. So it's, it's in a way, it's like a sudden unexpected trip right it's a sudden trip and i'm expecting there'll be alcohol and, and and a lot of food and things and so i'm trying to eat like a healthy high protein dinner beforehand and then when i go there i won't be i'll try not to eat too much so what am i trying to say life is unpredictable shit happens in life sometimes hopefully not as like dramatic as a funeral but sometimes things will happen in life where your like perfect diet plan gets thrown off and you have to do something else you're going somewhere else you know you you're going in a place with friends where you're expected to eat a lot where you know people will ask you to eat a lot like these things happen and with just a little bit of forward thinking foresight and planning So good. You can help yourself a lot. Man, if you have a Korean friend, ask them, please make me miyokuk. Don't just be a victim of, of the surrounding environment and, 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 and whatever happens in life. Like, Oh, you know, I was doing so well, but then, um, but then my friend, you know, invited me on a night out and everything went to shit. Like, A, it's like, do you have the foresight to be like, all right, I'm probably going to be in a situation where like a lot of food and a lot of high calorie food or just, just a lot of food in general is going to be like at my fingertips. And it's, I'm going to be in a social environment where it's kind of like, you just kind of eat. Okay. Then maybe you fast in, in that day like during the morning so you don't um, go too high over your calorie limit or maybe you choose just to enjoy yourself or let let go a little bit in that moment that's fine as well but it's a conscious decision you're not being swayed from side to side right to left because you don't have any boundaries you don't know how to erect and defend your boundaries so whenever a social circumstance or a friend or a family member just says eat you're like oh, i guess i have no control over what goes in my mouth and boom and you just eat you know And don't mistake this for me just ranting about how like I'm good and you're not. Because the only reason I'm able to tell you this is because that's exactly my issue. Still to this day. 
This is as much self therapy as it is like me trying to share value. And I've said this before, if I talk as I eat with you guys, I end up eating slower and I get full easier, which means the total amount that I eat is usually less, which is good and it's just healthier. But when we're just chugging food, when we're just in Korea, what do we call it? We call it puk pung hubib, which means like, like stormy ingestion. Yeah, like, like you ingest something, like inject like a storm into your system. It's not even chew, taste, or feel, or enjoy, or savor. It's just inject. You just... And with that, the leptin doesn't have time to signal to your brain that you're full. Leptin's, leptin's the, the satiety hormone. So you just end up eating loads. And you also look more sophisticated when you eat slower and you have a chat, you know?